now let's explore the module entry points registration so now you have got a uh, module initialization function and module cleanup function you have to inform or you have to register your kernel modules entry points with the kernel for that we use some macros which is given by the kernel for that we use module init and module exit macros these are the macros used to register your modules init and uh, clean up function with the kernel. Here module init and module exit is not a function but a macro defined in Linux module.h. For example module init will add its parameter to the init entry point database of the kernel and module exit will add its parameter to exit entry point database of the kernel. Basically, you just have to give your entry point name as an argument to these uh, macros. That's it. Now, the next part is module description. These are some metadata which you are going to include in your kernel module. You can include module license, module author, and module description. For that, these macros can be used. Out of these macros, module license macro is very much important where you have to mention license type of the kernel module what you are going to write. Module license is a macro used by the kernel module to announce its license type. If you load a module whose license parameter is non-GPL, then kernel triggers warning of being tainted. It's a way of kernel letting the users and developers know it's a non-free license based module. The developer community may ignore the bug reports you submit after loading the proprietary licensed module. The declared module license is also used to decide whether a given module can have access to the a small number of GPL only symbols in the kernel. Go to Linux module.h to find out what are the allowed parameters which can be used with this macro to load the module without tainting the kernel. So with this macro you have to use a string value. This string value indicates a license type. It could be GPL or non-GPL. And here you see the module license macro and these are the options you can use with a module license macro. It could be GPL or GPL v2, GPL BSD, MIT, all these string values you can use with that macro. If your module is proprietary then you can use the string proprietary. That's why you have to use the appropriate value according to your license for which you are module addressed to. When a non-GPL module is loaded, the kernel throws an error saying our proprietary module has been loaded and the kernel will get tainted. There is nothing wrong in using proprietary as an option here. You can use that. That depends on you. And if you want to understand more about these licensing schemes, then you can read the kernel documentation or you can just uh, Google these uh, license terms. You will get more info. In this course, for all our kernel modules, we will be using this option that is GPL. Exit this. Let's move forward. And by using module author um, macro, you can mention the author of the kernel module. And uh, by using module description macro, you can write a small descriptive message uh, which explains your kernel module. After that, there is also one more macro called module info from which you can create your own custom message. For example, if I want to include a message or a data such as a board is equal to beagle bone, then I would use module info. Here, board is a key and uh, beagle bone is a value when we do exercises we are going to use all these macros it will get clear when you see one example so you can 
extract these module description details by running some ELF analyzing tools such as object dump or mod info. There are various tools by which you can extract uh, these metadata of the kernel module. So we'll see when we generate some driver object files. So we'll see all these things when we build our kernel module and generate a .ko file that is kernel object file. In the next lecture, let's implement this hello world kernel module. And after that, we'll explore how to build a kernel module. I'll see you in the next lecture. Yeah.